beautiful, brilliant black women, let's look at solving our problems with our new theorem. The daughters of the Confederacy and, and all of their cohorts, whether they were liberal or whatever, as white women who all work together to ensure white supremacy in school, in healthcare, in social work. And if you break down Project 2025, so when they talk about restoring a family, they're not talking about every single group of people here being able to have the resources to have a nice family. And I want y'all to look at pictures. I want y'all to go back and I want you to look at pictures at the bravery, at the courage, at the brilliance, at the creativity of Black women and Black girls. I want us to be very clear about this as we move over to problem solving. Right. And if Project 2025 is enacted, the federal government finally getting on board with civil rights is what allowed a lot of this stuff to stop. If the federal government go even just stops enforcing it, you go back to states' rights. You go back into the tender mercies of these women. If the federal government is taken over by this policy, Black women have no help anywhere. This 2021 and 22 data reveals how white women are committing Black femicide and taking us out. White women represent over 90% of the healthcare workers in specialty units. Maternal health is only one of the ways that they are unaliving us and getting away with it. White women are committing hands-on, out-and-out genocide as they have done for 405 years in the United States and colonization. Let's, let's look at this problem-solving tool. So we're just going to show you real quick how it works. Something my daughter said, and I thought it was so poignant and brilliant. She said, you know, it's not that we're not going to have problems. It's that we have the tools to deal with the problem, right? And we just keep adding more tools and more, and more practice of those tools so that we develop our skills. That's all we're doing here. Okay. This is what it looks like in a circular mode. You're going to see different versions of the same thing throughout this. But the first thing we have to do is describe the problem. And otherwise, we got to name the problem. The next thing you got to do is amass info and analyze it. That's a part of what we did today. That's a part of what we've been doing as more aunties, believe it or not. We've been coming to this whole you know, point. So um, the next part is defining at least two to five objectives. Next is diagnosing the cause, You know, figuring out how we get here. How do we get here? So that we can see when things are happening that's going to make us repeat the same behavior that's harmful, that causes us um, pain, that means we're going to go through violence at the hands of other people. And then we have to come up with some actionable plans, things that we can put into place, solve the problem, okay? Um, and then we have to act on those plans, okay, right? So we have to find the right people to work with and, and put these plans into action, okay? And then we, the next step is monitoring. I spent a lot of time, um, I spent 10 years working at, at Head Start as health services supervisor, and I learned how to monitor from the feds. It's important because then you can self-diagnose, right? And then you audit and you make improvements on, on the plan, okay? What is the mortality and morbidity of Black women? And what are the two, the two major reasons for it, right? So if we said, okay, diabetes is the number one killer of Black women, right? Okay, but it's not. The number one is black men through black femicide. The number two is actually white women in healthcare and social work. Uh -huh. This is the, the, the problem solving. And what I did here was it starts here at the top with name it. Okay. So y'all are welcome to go through and then you'll see exactly what you're going to put into it. So when you name it, for instance, you want to specify the problem. Um, that's requiring a solution. So if I said, well, the number one thing we gotta do is, is stop black men from killing us as a problem, okay? Then I'd start by naming it just like I just did. And then we just go around the circle, right? This is a hexagon, these are shaped in, in the hexagon, but we just go around and we, and we enact each one, okay? So like I said, the first thing we gotta do is name the problem. We gotta articulate what the problem is. And then we get into the second part of it, which is, we have to understand the data behind it, right? And the studies and um, all of our different allegories, right? Our different stories and personal experiences, okay? And so it comes down to, in the second step of it, when did it begin? And we talked about when it began today, right? We've been talking about it all along here on Noir Aunties. Um, when did we find it? Um, who or what is involved? Is it curable? And it is, actually, okay? So... So let's take um, black femicide as a problem. The step three hexagon, if you guys want to go back and look, 
I put into this algorithm, black femicide, assault and battery of black women by black men, um, no protection, right? Um, and that we have a fear of defending ourselves. The next part where we amass info, I brought up um, the data, but I'm just showing you here where I got the data from and some of what the data is, okay? And then I defined what we want to have act actually happen, what the goals are in problem solving this particular problem of black femicide uh, for us to stop being uh, murked. Yeah, pretty simple, right? But you can see how I'm using the problem solving tool here, right? When we talk about diagnosing the cause, if we're talking about diagnosing the cause of black femicide, well, I put in there what I found the cause to be, a few of them, you know, what it is, right? Where it came from, what some of the problems are, um, how we got here, being the actionable plans, you know, enrolling in self-defense, um, taking concealed carry classes, putting your daughters in self-defense because they're going through a lot in these schools, being uh, sexualized as young girls, okay? So if we were to make one of the plans enrolling in self-defense, that's something we could do today. That's something we could do, have that done. We could, we could be enrolled in self-defense by Monday. I'm um, still carry classes by Monday. You, all you got to do is check in your local area to see who, who's giving, who's instructing and sign yourself up for it, right? It's actually not that expensive, you'll see. Um, um, Stephanie Perry, Mocha Mommy, all those incredible, Marissa, all these incredible Black women who are in the Exodus Summit, they are actually giving you another, another um, way to solve the problem, which is to move abroad. OK, um, so removing yourself from the United States, women like Miss D are giving you another part of the solution that you can you can employ, which is to increase your bag, because Auntie D just wrote a best selling book on seizing the crypto bull run at Avalon. I'm just saying, <laughs> get your copy today. Then you can deny black men access. You, you can say no. I say it all the time. Right. Um, get my what? Girl, we all know what my phone number is, 9MM380. I don't think you want to play them games, okay? We don't have to say the whole world or nothing like that. But when we're talking about coming up with actionable plans, we can move our energy back over to what we need as Black women and our children. Right? We can put that energy into, you know, um, executing and enacting these plans, which is the next step, right? So giving you um, problem-solving tools for literally solving the problem of black femicide. You know, I hear so many black women saying how they're afraid to go anywhere or do anything. They just want to stay home because they're afraid that they're going to be harmed by someone. They're going to be followed home or somebody's going to, some man's going to try to get in a car or something. Like that shit is real and it needs to stop. And we're talking about how you can actually stop it. So the next thing that you would do is once you enact the plan and you execute your plans, right? Um, you have to give yourself a timeline, right? I'm going to do this by this time. I'm going to do that by that time, okay? So you see how you can put almost any problem into this problem-solving tool and solve it. This is why I resist. This is, this is what I'm about. I resist because I need to know that Black and Indigenous girls are being held sacred, protected, and uplifted, okay? This is what it's for to me. I, I think we have to really start to pay attention to what's going on with our daughters and start um, really uh, choosing them, their mental health and all of that, right? So this is also why I resist. The fact that we are, we are dealing with all types of violence, physical, sexual, yes. And we're also, we're dealing with spiritual violence, okay? But one thing is clear for us as, as Black women and Black girls, we are being beat the hell up in the street actually solving what is in front of us, beside us, around us, underneath us, and, and, and in every way. I was talking to my twin cousin, and she was like, like, oh, well, but if you problem solve, where are you going to take it? So are there like Congress people you're going to get a hold of and this and that? Absolutely the fuck not. I don't need a Congress person. You know what I need? Black women. Because if Black women make it a trend, it's done. That's all it is. If Black women say no to some shit, it's a no. If Black women say this is what's going to happen, then this is what's going to happen. Okay? Okay? Solving our critical issues is going to require us to have a mindset change and focus on what serves our best interests as black women and our children. While I did copyright all this information, I really need for black women to know, use this, share it, and I love you.